Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Northeast. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrina Ag Solutions. Well, across the, uh, the U.S., you're looking at the hazards map. Pretty quiet across the Northeast, but not so quiet across the rest of the country. Dense fog advisories across parts of the Southern Plains into the Central Plains. Winter weather advisories across parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin, and then winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings across much of the Pacific Northwest. So we look at temperatures over the next 10 days. We're going to begin to flip this pattern that's brought a lot of warmth to parts of the southeast into, at times, the northeast region, beginning to flip that pattern and lock in a little bit of cold air here across the eastern half of the country. Uh, not quite, you know, uh, certain yet how, how intense and how prolonged this cold will be, but definitely reversing this pattern as we head into the end of January. Continuing to look at a lot of uh, precipitation here again across the eastern half of the country. We'll talk about that in detail here. Another big storm system making its way through here as we head into the end of the week with uh, snow in the forecast here across the northern half of the northeast. Now, as we look at the uh, the water vapor or the uh, the satellite picture here on Thursday morning, Tuesday morning, I get all the wrong words out of my forecast here early on. Looking at the satellite picture here on Tuesday morning, we do have an upper level low making its way across the Great Lakes, bringing some snow to parts of Minnesota and Michigan early on this morning. We'll be watching for another storm system to lift across the region on Wednesday that will eventually bring some snow into the northeast region. A look at the radar picture again that snow off to the north a lot of rain and thunderstorm activity across the mid-south into the southeast and then across parts of the mid-atlantic temperatures across the region we've got a frontal boundary right here that's kind of keeping the warm and very humid air off to the southeast while well, you can kind of see the uh, the typical pattern here across the great lakes now with the warm air advection in advance of that little short wave the cold air coming in on the back side but not tapping into the really deep moisture that's kind of trapped here near the gulf coast now, as we look at the seven days, uh, past seven days precipitation, we see a lot of precipitation across this corridor from the, uh, the Gulf Coast into the Northeast region. Now, let's look at the next seven days of precipitation, and it looks very similar from Texas and Oklahoma northward into the Midwest, into the Northeast region. Another corridor of one to three inches of precipitation expected here as we head through the end of the week. Now, we can stair step through the next few days, just kind of timing out the impacts as we head through the rest of the day today. Some light snow across parts of northern New York, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Some light rain across southern New York, getting into parts of Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, and that region right there. Heading into the morning on Wednesday, some light snow possible across the north, quiet across the rest of the, uh, the northeast here as high pressure moves in. Here's our next storm system making its way across the Midwest on Wednesday. Getting into Wednesday evening now, we start to see that precipitation starting across the west, across Pennsylvania and New York. Light snow possible across northern New York, getting into northern Vermont and New Hampshire. And then by the time we get to uh, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, looking at some heavy snow across parts of New York, eastward into New, Ver uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine possibly uh, getting some snow across Massachusetts as well. Heading into Friday now, this is when our much more substantial storm system develops on the backside here, bringing some snow to parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes on Friday morning, expanding on into the Northeast region as we head into the weekend. What's driving all of this? Well, it's the jet stream, a very active jet stream. First, looking at a couple of short waves. So here's the first one. Let me change over to black here, making its way through the flow here during the day on Tuesday. Now, as we head through Wednesday, here's the next little wave. You see it? These are both compact, quick-moving, flat waves uh, moving through the flow here. Now, I want you to notice the difference as we begin to get into Saturday, Friday and Saturday. This next system, you see how it digs a little bit more? It's more amplified rather than being kind of a flat wave. We're seeing it kind of dig into the flow, and that's what helps uh, kind of get that larger area of low pressure going helps draw more moisture northward from the Gulf of Mexico and helps lead to that corridor of significant precipitation once again. We can see the response here looking at the moisture content within the atmosphere, bringing it back to today. Getting into Wednesday, we see that system make its way through. Again, the deeper moisture held off to the south, still able to pull some of that northward into the, uh, the area of low pressure off to the north across the Great Lakes. Heading into Thursday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, this is when we see that snow across parts of the uh, the, the uh, northeast region here. And then here comes the big one, Friday, getting into Saturday. And this one bringing much more no moisture northward from the Gulf of Mexico. And that's what leads to the potential for some heavy snow across first the Great Lakes, but then eventually parts of the northeast region. Let's take it a little bit further. <clears throat> Let's look at temperatures now for the next few days. Watch this play out. Watching uh, first the, uh, the Wednesday system bring some warm air northward. Cold air coming in on the backside, cooling it down as we head into the day on Thursday. Now let's look at the high resolution NAM precipitation forecast and time out the first two little waves. The first one here making its way through on Tuesday evening 
into Tuesday night. Rather light precipitation, but still looking at some uh, treacherous, treacherous, slippery conditions, wintry conditions across northern portions of the northeast region here. Some snow possible across northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, with some freezing rain possible across parts of uh, central and southern New York getting into Massachusetts. Total snow as we just look at things through Thursday. The heaviest snow well off to the north here, northern New York into Maine, looking at anywhere from 4 to 10 inches of snow. South from there, looking at all rain or at least a, a rain-snow mix. Now let's take it a little bit further, uh, just further out here. We'll just uh, allow us to see the weekend storm system as it makes its way through. Here's the Tuesday night precipitation, getting into the day Wednesday, Wednesday evening, Wednesday night. Getting into Thursday morning now, seeing, a, again, strong storm system. It really does amplify here as it gets into the northeast region. So, especially on the north side, northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, where we see snow, strong uh, northeast winds here on the backside of that area of low pressure. So, uh, intense wintry conditions here through the day on Thursday across northern portions of the northeast region. Now, once again, checking in with that total precipitation forecast through the next week, and then now looking at the ensemble probability of at least three inches of snow as we head through Saturday evening. And again, we're starting to see those probabilities tick up as you look at northern portions of the northeast region. Now the tra transition here, we're looking at uh, cooler temperatures coming into the region here as we head into especially early next week. First wave makes its way in here through the weekend, but much cooler temperatures expected as we head into next week as we flip this pattern trough west ridge east. By the time we get to the end of January, looking very different the trough anchoring itself across the eastern U.S. We'll finish here with a look at the high temperatures for the next few days. Tuesday, teens north with mid-40s to the south. A little bit warmer on Wednesday, mid-20s to the north with near 50 degrees off to the south. As we look at Thursday afternoon, high temperatures mid-20s. Rather chilly for just about ever 140 degrees on the warm side here across southern Pennsylvania. Friday, a little bit cooler still, just about everyone below freezing except for uh, perhaps portions of New Jersey, southern Pennsylvania, and getting into Maryland. And then we'll start to warm up on the weekend as the storm system approaches with temperatures perhaps in the 40s and 50s on Sunday. Now looking at the overnight lows here, waking up tomorrow morning to temperatures in the single digits in the north to near 36 across the south. Very similar look on Thursday. Friday, much colder on the backside of that uh, cold front, the first system that makes its way through on Thursday. Temperatures near zero or below across the north with temperatures below freezing, but right around 30 degrees across uh, parts of Maryland, southern uh, New Jersey. And then finishing with our overnight lows on Friday night into Saturday, well below zero across the north, with teens expected in the south. Now, as always, Eric Snodgrass will have an in-depth look at the uh, or our long-range U.S. weather uh, analysis on Wednesday morning, a look at the next one to two weeks in our Thursday morning ag forecast video, and I'll be back to talk about the northeast on Friday morning, so plenty of time to kind of hammer out the impacts of our weekend storm system.